We want to conclude our single takes focused on biblical characters who experienced going into the desert or seclusion or solitude, kind of going into lockdown, today with the Apostle Paul. It's the story about a fiery, zealous follower of God whom God wanted to use but had to whoop him up the side of the head, so to speak, before he could actually be used. And that whoop upside the head included some seclusion, included some solitude. Here's the story in Acts chapter 9, beginning with verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now, the verse that really captures my uh, attention in this is verse, the verse 8. In verse 8, it says, Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Now, Damascus is where he was heading in the first place. So they led him by the hand. That is the phrase that really caught my attention. They led him by the hand. It was so against Paul's character to be led by hand. I mean, Paul was active. Paul was a doer. Paul was a leader. Paul was a zealot wanting to serve as God and hell-bent on destroying this fledgling group of Jews who were following Jesus. He wanted to put an end to it. Paul was active. He was a doer. He wasn't someone that hung back. In the book of Galatians, in the first chapter, Paul just gives a very brief sketch of his history, and he describes himself. These are his words. He says, You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many more among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. This does not describe to me a lead-by-the-hand kind of guy. He was a doer, and he wasn't going to let anything get in his way, except until God interrupted his plans with some serious solitude. Luke tells us that he was blind and the, he didn't have anything to eat or drink for three days. Don't you wonder what Paul was feeling? What was the experience? What was that like? I mean, his world, talk about him, a, a world turned upside down. I wonder what he experienced. This was a very smart man who knew what he wanted it, and he pursued it aggressively. Now he finds himself helpless, blind, and he had to be led by the hand. He goes from active to passive. The phrase uh, led by the hand reminds me also of Psalm 7720. It says this, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. What if in this pandemic, it's a time for God to lead us by hand, to lead you by the hand. Many of us live such crazy, busy lives. We say, I know I should do this. I know I should do that. 
uh, I should be doing this and I should be working on my faith, but we're just too busy. We're too active. We're too doers. But what if God wants to make us during this pandemic? Uh, what if God wants to lead us by the hand? What might we see? What might you see if the scales fell from your eyes like they did from Paul's? How might God want you to live? What might you be missing? How might God want to be leading you? God led Paul by the hand and it changed the world.